Chapter 16 Twelve Days Until Christmas This place is huge, Cammy said to Lucy as they walked up the icy path to Alma Sanchez's house. I think she must have twenty-four rooms, just for her and her cat. I bet the cat likes having the rooms to run around, Lucy said, trying to keep her voice light to hide how tired she was feeling. The walk to Miss Sanchez's house wasn't more than a mile from Lucy's house, but tromping through the fresh snow was taxing, especially since sometimes there were ice patches or uneven sections of the sidewalk that were easy to trip on. Plus, there was the stress of knowing she was slowing Cammy down. Right about now, Lucy was really missing Valentine. Cammy laughed as she led them up the steps. Lucy s snagged the toe of her boot on the first one. It was always hard to gauge how high steps were, but Cammy had her arm and she steadied herself. Cammy shifted slightly to ring the bell, which Lucy heard chime inside the home. A minute later, the door flew open. Cammy, Lucy, come in, Miss Sanchez said. Cammy guided Lucy into a warm room that smelled of butter cookies and pine needles. If the house was as big as Cammy claimed, Lucy imagined that the Christmas tree must be spectacular. Perfect timing, Mr. Miss Sanchez said. I'm testing a Christmas cookie recipe. You'll have to try some and tell me what you think. If you insist... Cammy said in her usual friendly way. Thanks, Lucy added. You girls make yourselves at home and I'll be right back with the cookies, Miss Sanchez said. Here's the sofa, Cammy said, carefully backing Lucy up so that her calves rested against the seat. And just so you know, this whole room is lined with bookcases. She's definitely a big reader. So the bookmark could belong to her, Lucy said sinking down on the soft cushions. Yeah, she fits a lot of the profile. She's a reader. She has money and time, Kimmy said in a low voice. Plus, she's generous, inviting us without even asking why we're here, Lucy added. I know, Kimmy agreed. She reminds me of my grandma, always welcoming. Lucy noticed a note of sadness in Kimmy's voice and wondered if she should t should ask about it, but then she heard footsteps coming down the hall toward them, and a moment later, Miss Sanchez was back, the smell of cookies even more powerful. Lucy, here's your plate, Miss Sanchez said, handing it to Lucy and making sure she had it securely before letting go. How's that dog of yours? At this, Lucy smiled, remembering how kind Miss Sanchez had been on the street that day. She's great, thanks, Lucy said. Lucy waited until she heard Cammy crunching into her cookie, then she felt for hers. It was in the shape of a candy cane, and studded with rough sugar sprinkles. Lucy took a bite, the luscious buttery cookie, just the right amount of sweet. Delicious, she said when she had swallowed. Mmm, Cammy agreed. These are fantastic. Thank you, Miss Sanchez said, sounding pleased. Oh, are either of you allergic to cats? I think Naomi is coming in to pay a visit. Lucy shook her head, and a moment later she heard a soft thump as the cat jumped up on the sofa and came over to sniff Lucy's hand. Her whiskers soft against Lucy's skin. Lucy let Naomi sniff her for a moment, then began to pet her. Naomi kneaded her paws into the sofa and started to purr. She likes you, Miss Sanchez said. Lucy smiled. I like her, too, she said. She's beautiful, Cammy said, reaching over to pet Naomi as well. Then Lucy felt Cammy shift slightly on the sofa and knew she was about to bring up the excuse they'd planned for knocking on Miss Sanchez's door in the first place. So, we came by because we know you, you lead the town choir Christmas caroling on December 21st, and I had a special request for... And I had kind of a special request... For when you come by our place. My grandmother's favorite carol is Go Tell It on the Mountain, and I was wondering if you guys could sing it for her. I'd be happy to, Miss Sanchez said, and how thoughtful of you to think of it. Lucy heard her pick up another cookie. Well, she does a lot for me, Cammy said, and she just loves everything about Christmas in Pine River. Don't we all? Miss Sanchez said.
Now it was Lucy's turn, and she sat up a little straighter, accidentally startling the cat. I love the Christmas gala. She tried to make her rehearsed line sound natural, but she felt like her voice was coming out stiff. <clears throat> Every year the concert is just amazing, Lucy tried again. Totally amazing. She was glad Max was not here to see her, her total spy fail. We'll all be looking forward to your part in that, Miss Sanchez said to Cammy. Lucy was surprised when Cammy said nothing, but she pressed on with the script. And of course, there's the angel tree, she said, like it had just in that moment occurred to her. Yeah, it's already granted some pretty incredible wishes, Cammy added. Like the new house for the Callahans, Miss Sanchez said. Ed Pink was telling me about it. Wow, imagine all the work it would take to set up such a thing. Of course, whoever was behind the tree would pretend to be impressed by it, to hide his or her tracks. Lucy listened intently for any inflections that might indicate Miss Sanchez was hiding something. But either Miss Sanchez wasn't G.B., or she was a much better actor than Lucy. The person behind the tree is truly an angel, Miss Sanchez went on passionately. A maker of miracles. Lucy heard Cammy slump slightly next to her and had to admit that this wasn't sounding good. Yes, G.B. would cover the truth, but he or she would pro probably wouldn't go around boasting about the work the tree did. We're lucky to live in a town with a person who would create such a special and unique tradition, Miss Sanchez said. It's a blessing. Lucy sank back deeper into the sofa cushions. They could probably cross Miss Sanchez off the list of possible GBs. Girls, is everything okay? Miss Sanchez asked. Lucy realized she had let her face fall into a frown. She was definitely not good at hiding her true feelings. No, it's just we're kind of on a mission to find out who's behind the angel tree, Cammy said. Isn't the whole point of the angel tree that the identity of the organizer is a secret? Miss Sanchez asked. Yes, Cammy said, but whoever's behind the tree has been doing it for so, for so many years and has never been thanked. We wanted to change that. There was a tiny rustle that was either Miss Sanchez shaking her head or nodding. Sometimes not being able to see was frustrating. You know, I like that idea, Miss Sanchez said. A person bringing so much joy to our town should get some joy coming back her way. So she had been nodding. Her? Cammy asked, her voice suddenly alert. You think it's a woman? Miss Sanchez laughed. You're quite the detective. Well, I'm not sure, but every so often when I help out with a bigger wish, I get a handwritten note, and the writing looks like a woman's writing. Do you have a note? Cammy asked eagerly. I do, Miss Sanchez said. Lucy could hear the smile in her voice as she stood up and opened a drawer in a desk or table at the far side of the room. Here you go, she said, walking back and handing it to Cammy. Cammy cleared her throat. Okay, this is what it says. Please give your donated ornaments to Ed Pink on Saturday afternoon. Not a lot to get from that, I don't think, Miss Sanchez said. No, but the writing is very, um, curly, Cammy said, clearly trying to stay positive. It kind of looks like my grandma's. Miss Sanchez laughed. That would be quite the mystery to uncover. Your own grandmother being the one behind the angel tree. Cammy laughed. She would totally do something like that, but there's no way she could keep it a secret from me. Her voice had a little of its balance back, but Lucy could tell she was still discouraged that Miss Sanchez was not GB. And Lucy had to admit she felt the same. She rubbed Naomi's head, feeling slightly comforted by the cat's steady purr. We should probably get going, Cammy said, her coat brushing against the sofa as she stood. They thanked Mr. Miss Sanchez for the cookies, gave Naomi one last pat and began to trip and began the trip back to town. Ruling people out <clears throat> is an important part of the process, Cammy said as they walked. Lucy was starting to know Cammy well enough that, that she could tell that that she could tell that the upbeat adult tone covered her disappointment. It is, Lucy agreed staunchly, and what's good is that we found out so fast that it's not Miss Sanchez. That way, that way, we're not wasting time on a false lead. Plus, the note is a great clue. Good point, Cammy said a bit more cheerfully. It really did look like a woman's writing. 
so we can include that on our list of traits. A car drove past slowly, and the driver honked. It's Miss Clayton, Cammie said, waving at one of the owners of Hobby Horse, a craft shop in town. Lucy waved, too. That reminds me, actually, Cammie went on. I wanted to get some yarn for my grandmother. She's crocheting a scarf for my cousin Willa. Lucy heard a note of tension when Cammie said her cousin's name. And she needs more gold. Would you mind if we stopped off at the lobby? Would you mind if we stopped off at the hobby horse before I take you home? No, that's fine, Lucy said. She would have preferred to go straight home and, and rest, but of course she was happy to make the stop for Cammie. If she had more energy, she'd get some yarn for the sweater she was knitting for Mom for Christmas, but right now the thought of a long conversation about getting just the right shade of green made her want to take a nap. A few minutes later, they were back on Main Street, and Cammie was opening the door to the hobby horse, which smelled of lavender and wool. Do you mind if I run in and get the yarn? Cammie asked. Sure, I'll just wait here, Lucy said. The store was crowded with voices and smells, <clears throat> and Lucy felt a headache tapping at her temples. She stepped backward and felt her hip brush against something that fell to the floor with a series of loud crashes. Someone gave out a small cry and a number of people gasped. Lucy's whole body clenched up as she waited to hear what had happened, what she had done. Don't worry, it's fine. It was Miss Clayton, still smelling the crisp outside air. Just be careful you don't hurt yourself, Lucy. Lucy didn't know what she meant or how exactly she was supposed to protect herself. She felt naked and helpless, like a baby, unable to do the simplest thing. It did not help when Cammie came up, sounding panicked. Lucy, I'm so sorry I left you so close to that display, Cammie said, grabbing onto Lucy's arm and walking her away from whatever mess she had created. I wasn't even thinking about how delicate it was and how easy it would be to knock into it. What was it? Lucy asked, feeling close to tears. Um, some crystal figurines and a couple of glass vases, Cammie said. And they're all broken? Lucy asked, shame flooding her. I'm not sure, Cammie said distractedly. Of course she didn't want to be explaining every little detail to Lucy when she was probably angry at her for being so careless. I'm so sorry, Lucy said, but her words were lost in the sounds of a vacuum turning on and the clinky whoosh of the shards of glass and crystals being sucked up. Cammie apologized to Miss Clayton about a thousand times, which only made Lucy feel worse. After all, it wasn't Cammie's fault that Lucy was a klutz, Finally, Cammie took Lucy's arm and walked them into the icy air that cooled Lucy's hot face. "'I'm really sorry,' Lucy said as Cammie led her home. "'Don't worry, it wasn't your fault,' Cammie said, but she sounded distant. "'It was, actually,' Lucy said, her voice brittle, "'and I'm sorry you didn't get the yarn either.' "'Really, Lucy, it's all fine,' Cammie said. Lucy thought she detected a note of impatience in Cammie's voice and decided to let it drop, even though the whole thing felt like a lump of coal in her belly. She walked the rest of the way to Lucy's in silence. Once she was up in her room, Lucy lay down on her bed. She had a message from Anya, but she didn't feel like calling her friend back now. She wasn't in the mood to talk to anyone, at least not any person. Instead, she rested her cheek against Valentine's soft fur. It was a mistake for me to go, she told the dog, whose tail thumped on the floor when she heard Lucy's voice. I made everything harder, just like I knew I would. She rubbed Valentine's ears and was rewarded with a lick on her, hit, on her hand. Lucy was thankful that Valentine would be back at school with her on Monday and still endlessly grateful to the person behind the angel tree who had saved her dog's life, which was the only reason she was going to go to the meetings after school. But he, but from here on out, no matter how hard, how bad it made her feel, she was going to be firm. No more outings wish she would make a mess of things.